Hi, I'm Leslie Thompson at the 2009 Annual Meeting of the American Society for Aesthetic Plastic Surgery. And I'm joined here by Dr. Elliot Jacobs, who is a Manhattan plastic surgeon and an expert in gynecomastia. So Dr. Jacobs, thank you very much for spending time with us today. You're very welcome. And I have seen you on Discovery Health. I know you've been on 2020. You've been all over the media because of your area of expertise. So explain first, what is gynecomastia? Well, gynecomastia is the excessive development of tissue, whether it's fat or breast tissue and usually both on a male chest, frequently in an adolescent and sometimes in an older adult. Mm -hmm. And is this still a taboo subject? My guess would be people are uncomfortable talking about it. Yes, it is very much a taboo. Uh, very few men will openly talk about it. Adolescent boys won't even share this with their parents and they just kind of hide in the corner. They put on three t-shirts and they just uh, hide from their friends. Well, adolescent boys obviously go through a lot of physical changes. I remember my brother had a growth spurt one year, shot up about six inches. So how do they know at what point, you know, whether they might grow out of it if, if it's something that started to manifest? Well, usually uh, gynecomastia will subside within a year or two after it develops. About 60%, believe it or not, 60% of uh, teenagers will go through hormonal fluctuations and develop some degree of breast enlargement. Most times this will disappear but sometimes it will remain. And we usually will not qualify any adolescent for gynecomastia surgery until they've been at least two years with stable uh, and large breasts without any change. Mm -hmm. And then um, in terms of the surgery itself, what is actually involved with the surgical procedure? Well, as you know, there's a combination of both fat and breast tissue. Uh, I've des designed some special instruments in order to remove both of these problems simultaneously. So it is a type of liposuction instrument. However, it is specifically sharp and designed to be able to penetrate and ultimately remove excess breast tissue as well. And I can do that through a tiny little nick in the skin near the armpit. Oh, really? Yes and we're able to minimize the scars. This has been one of the main problems with this surgery because you don't want to trade a bad scar, a surgical scar, for an improvement in contour. And up until the advent of liposuction and even the newer techniques, this was not possible. Interesting. Well, when we spoke earlier, you had mentioned that um, a lot of family physicians may not be aware that it's actually safe to have the surgical procedure for gynecomastia for adolescents even while they're still in their teenage years. Uh, what's a safe range for somebody to that consider is, it? That's correct. And uh, there's one of the myths of medicine that um, a lot of pediatricians adhere to in that you should not have any surgery on gynecomastia until you're 18. I don't believe that. I think that's wrong because if you have a uh, a 12 year old who's had it for two years and it's not changing or a 14 year old and it's not changing and it's affecting their social life their ability to participate in sports uh, being uh, ridiculed and embarrassed and having snide remarks passed uh, these youngsters become cripples in their very sensitive teenage years when their self-esteem is building up and for them to be harnessed by this problem will affect them. So why wait? And there is really no good reason to wait. I've operated on youngsters between 12 and 18 years of age. And to this date, I've not had one of them had it recur. And that's the main concern. And it hasn't happened. And then after the surgical procedure, what's the recovery time? The recovery time is very brief. There's a little soreness. I've I always tell them it feels like you just did 200 straight push-ups. It's kind of like a muscle burn, and it lasts about two days. It's coverable by uh, simple pain medication, and most guys don't take any medication at all. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they're up uh, and, and back to school or sedentary desk work within two or three days after the operation. Fantastic. So it's really something that can be pretty readily resolved. It's just a matter of being forthright if you have the condition, understanding what the condition is and then communicating with your surgeon. That's correct. And we're trying to get the word out because so many men and young men don't know what this is. They can't speak to their parents. Uh, they don't even know the name of it, so they can't even search it. And as a result, they don't know that there is help available for them. And the operation is a little over an hour on an outpatient basis. So it's a very quick operation and a very easy recovery. 
That's fantastic to learn. Well, Dr. Jacobs, thank you so much for spending time with us today. You're most welcome. It's been my pleasure. Great. Well, and thank you for joining us. I'm Leslie Thompson for the Plastic Surgery Channel.